I'm ahead of schedule on my rehab. What color you got? I'm going to show you all the stuff that I've been doing to get healthy. The most fun I could ever have on a baseball field, actually. <laughs> Including this really like gnarly technique of shocking my body with electricity. Uh, oh, and I have a special surprise for you at the end of this video, which I think you're really going to like. Let's start at the beginning with my first day back doing exercises after the injury. Well, I am back at the dock today. Today starts the rehab process. This is six days after my injury. It's the first day I could lift my knee to waist height. So we started off training with some isometrics or just holding my leg at waist height for 10 seconds. Isometrics can be great for 10 and healing and strengthening, which is why we started with those. And that approach seemed to be working. It's a week since I got injured. You saw last week how my leg was immediately after, like the day after, I couldn't lift it off the ground. But uh, yeah, here's the progress. Left leg, easy. You can go up here, hold, do all this stuff. Right leg, I can go here, hold, do all this stuff. And I only have a little bit of pain doing that so we're making progress putting my clothes on trying to lift my leg to put it over my foot i uh, haven't been able to do so i had to like bend down slide it over my foot today i was actually able to like you know bend down a little bit lift my leg up and like slowly put my shorts on the stuff we're doing in the weight room the isometrics the exercises are, are helping All right, we're back to get a second MRI. I was last here two weeks ago in which I could not walk up the steps. This is what it looked like trying to raise my right leg and my left leg last time. And this is what it looks like this time. I'd say that's a big improvement. Last time I was told that uh, within about two weeks I would be walking normally. This is the two week mark. I've been walking normally now for four or five days. So I like to think that I'm a little bit ahead. I have pretty much full strength in my hip back, just the psoas muscle is still a little bit uh, weak compared to my left side. Hopefully we see some good results on the MRI and then I can start running, returning to baseball activities uh, tomorrow. The one on this side is original. And this is now. Almost all the swelling is gone. It feels good. One, zero. I never really had pain, but I couldn't lift my leg. I mean, I feel him pushing, but it doesn't, there's no like, no sensation or anything. Maybe, a, maybe a slight bit more on the right, very close to same. Slowly. Mm -hmm. Do we see evidence of tissue damage or do we just see the white as evidence of like inflammation swelling? There's no like image of the actual, oh here this line is a tear or something like that. And that's evident by the white? Am I then cleared to like start running and building up and stuff like that? Or if I complete my like long toss and pull downs and stuff by October 6th, and then bullpens, I guess, would be like for a week and maybe live to hitters for a week. So we'd really be looking at like October 20th before I was cleared to be in a game for like a, an inning or two. October 20th, just around a playoff, the second round of playoff, first round team winner against the first place team. So this is a plan. Going back to what we had talked about 28th, I have just playing catch till that day, like six days of playing catch. Uh, running wise, half full by then. So sprints would come after the 28th in the progression, see the MRI again, make sure we're cleared and then then go. I'm not sure you could have asked for much more out of that meeting. Guess we're ahead of schedule, which um, I felt like, but it's nice to see it confirmed on the MRI. <sighs> Get to throw and start running and being an athlete again tomorrow. <clears throat> what up? All right, first day back running and throwing. I gotta remember what my normal dynamic warm up is though. You see me doing something that you don't want me to do, just stop me. I'm getting too close. <laughs> I'd help you move it, but I think that's not on the rehab program, right?
Nope, this is the part where you start getting nervous though. These ones. I'm going very light, don't worry. Normally I'd be bounding like four times as far. How do I look? Movement good? First step done, dynamic warm up, no problems. We'll see how everything feels throwing. I haven't thrown in two weeks, so shoulder might be a little bit cranky, but it's usually the amount of time I take off in an off season, like the max amount of time I take off. And usually my shoulder feels kind of cranky for the first like three days that I come back. So the plan for today is to go through a normal recovery day plyos, reverse throws, pivot picks, and a couple with the lighter balls, 115 total throws, including reverse throws. Usually I do that for the first like three days back throwing and then pick up a baseball after that. So made it through the four pound ball, no issues, but usually the two pound ball where I feel something in my shoulder. So see if that's true today or not. <sighs> I'm winded. I threw the green ball with no issues, so ahead of where I would normally be in the off season. <laughs> What's the radar gun say? 171? 44, 46? Kilometers? No. Oh, okay, good. I was gonna say if that's kilometers, we had a problem. <sighs> oh boy. 54, 57. I can compete at that range. Position players do it all the time, you know? 54, 57, then a random like 65 and it seems super fast. 58 to 62. Throwing gas today. 65, really getting up there. Shoulders uh, maybe a tad bit cranky, but less than it normally is in the off season. Elbow feels like it hasn't thrown in two weeks. Good first day, no problem with the hip. So that's uh, the most encouraging thing. Next up we have walk jogs. 30 seconds of jogging, 30 seconds of walking for 15 total minutes. This is the first time in two weeks I've touched a baseball field. Ah, uh, poles, 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 poles. I think I ranted about poles earlier this year on the vlog. Not a fan of poles, but today we got poles. And go. You do. When I come in tomorrow and I'm sore, I want you to know it's from running the poles, not because running makes me sore. How's my running form look? Good? More compliments, more adjectives to describe how good I look, please. Not even kidding, my ankles and my calves are going to be sore tomorrow. I don't ever run poles. Did I pass? Yeah, you passed. I passed? Okay. Oh yeah, running poles in high school is definitely for punishment. I guess I technically ran a couple poles with the Indians because they had us do like three quarter poles by three or something like that. Even in college, we were supposed to go on like 30 minute runs mm. after our pitching. So I would jog out of the stadium and as soon as, as soon as I was out of sight, I would just walk to the gas station, get some breakfast and a drink and like walk back and then pour half the water on my head so it looked like I was sweating and then go back in and hand the stopwatch to my coach. Thanks, Coach. As much as I bitch about poles, it actually is a, an important step, given that that's the only motion that uh, has ever bothered me. Just kind of lifting my knee forward, jogs, and warm up and throwing today, completely fine. No issues in the hip. So an important part of the rehab process is making sure that other areas of your body don't deteriorate while you're rehabbing the injured part. So we're gonna work on my scaps today, involving some foam rolling and some trigger point stuff with a baseball or a lacrosse ball. It's gonna involve some stretching, some band work, and then upward rotation scapular exercises or Y's, eyes, Y's, T's. Some of you may have heard of that. So the whole point of there is to get the scaps working correctly uh, so that when I come back to throwing, I don't end up with another problem because I didn't maintain my body in areas other than what we were working on. And then we're gonna do some throwing, we're gonna do some more running, some plyometric stuff in the weight room to get my lower body going, starting to move a little bit quicker. Now that we're all activated in the right position, time to warm up to throw. I'm gonna start my year on the aisle here at the dock. I'm gonna end my year here on the aisle at the dock. We don't know yet. That's right, that's right. We don't know yet. Always holding out optimism. I like that, Koki. We balance each other well, you know? Like, I'm extremely negative. <laughs> you can be positive. It's like yin and yang, you know? Are you excited for Tuesday, Koki? We get to play catch on Tuesday. You can start working on your mechanics. Road to 140. Road to 140. Road to 160, but for you, road to 140. We'll get there at the exact same time. 140 is a big leap for me. It's throwing like 110. Well, 160 is a big leap for me. I got super mad and threw a ball as hard as I possibly could and it was 159. It was 99.23. So an extra 0.3 MPH and I would have had 100 officially by rounding. But I'm soft. I just didn't want it bad enough, I think. So no sprints today? <laughs> you can build up too. I mean, that was fast. Did you see how fast I moved right there? You were still talking and I was already way down there. Oh, there goes my bag. If it's time for me to throw a live BP, do you think they'd have me throw a live BP to the 
big league guys. Oh. Like, I'm pretty good at giving up homers. I could like increase their confidence, you know? So I have like Maki, Soto, Miyazaki in there, give up absolute nukes. They'll be like, wow, I feel good. I will say my shoulder feels dramatically better today than it did two days ago when I started throwing again. How's my velo? Good? 59, now it's 62. Only five more miles to go. Oh. See, this is why I shouldn't try to feel my position. 69. Nice. Yeah, that sounds way too aggressive. Perfectly positioned. Look at that. See, I can't... Do you see that? I can't even catch the ball. Well, I, I'm not at that part of my progression yet. Well, that's throwing for today. Shoulder feels a lot better than it did two days ago, so I think we're ready to progress to playing catch. My favorite, time to run poles again. So the plan for today is to go three-quarter pole, and then however long it takes me to run, wait three times as long, and then run another one. Six of those. You running with me? You're my pace car. I'm going too fast. You're like, hey, we gotta slow it down a little bit. The most fun I could ever have on a baseball field, actually, <laughs> if we're being honest. Your favorite's practice, right? Yeah, favorite practice, right. running. Don't throw, don't pitch, don't work on pitch design. Don't try to strike people out, none of that, just run. I don't like lifting heavy things, but even lifting heavy things is better than just running. I got sweat in my eye. So what we got next? We got plyos in the weight room. All right, I'll go change shoes to put on my inside shoes instead of my outside shoes. All right, what kind of plows we got today? Box jump yeah. to the one I'm sitting on? Yeah. Probably a little bit higher than that. I'm an explosive athlete, remember? Two by three here? Yeah. I look good, don't I? Yeah. Powerful? Powerful. So I have to have a good rest in between this, but I can take repeated plyometrics that's running. <laughs> but these were trying to move a little bit closer towards the mechanism in which I injured myself, which was basically being in a hinged position with the hip and then trying to pop up out of it. Some lateral jumps, some lateral twists, and uh, eventually we'll progress to, I guess, trying to make the same play. So going from a position where I was kind of like this, popping up out and trying to rotate. Followed by a table blade. <sighs> In PFPs, do I get to make the same play? Is that my final test? Like we roll a ground ball over there and I have to slide and do it again? Okay, well maybe we won't get all the way there, but we're getting closer. Big day today. I put cleats on for the first time since my injury. I'm gonna play catch and do some more uh, running and get a lower body lift in for the first time. I get to actually like move weight and like lift a heavy thing. Feel a little bit more like an athlete, a little bit more like a baseball player, which is good. Day four of throwing. I passed out of uh, plow balls only. I'm gonna shorten the routine just to a normal warm-up routine today. Ready for a big day, Koki? Oh boy, can see some things haven't changed. I still spray balls everywhere. I'm supposed to like try to hit a spot, I think, is what I'm supposed to do at this point. Two weeks, I've forgotten everything about what I'm supposed to do in my routine. Oh my gosh. Uh, make some athletic throws. You wouldn't think that it'd be like completely foreign. In two weeks and it just feels like I've never thrown a baseball before. I don't think I've hit a singular spot yet. There we go. I still got my infielder skills though. I'm trying to remember how to throw my pitches. How about the slider? When you catch this one, I need you to really do this afterwards so it makes it look like it's really moving. I'm just kidding, don't do that. We'll finish on that. That's how you make me feel good about my throwing session, Koki. The last one, you just, oh my goodness, that moved too much, I couldn't catch it. Oh, that was in too. I'm telling you that I could do sprints today and be perfectly fine. What you do with that information is up to you. Good first day of throwing a baseball, and I'm feeling better than expected, so we're gonna move up the running timeline a little bit. So instead of doing another day of three quarter poles, we're moving up to half poles, which is more in my acceptable range of distance running. Half pole is like the longest pole you should ever run, in my opinion. Six half poles, three to one, rest to active time, right? How do I start this thing? Go, okay. We'll get you in shape in no time, Koki. I'll have you looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> no, no, you gotta sit up at least. Laying down's not good for the heart. Lost the translator to half poles. Tough scene. So I look like Usain Bolt? I look fast. No one's ever told me that before. You're making my day. My whole week, my whole life, actually. Closer. 
I'm just shuffling to the side. Okay, are you rolling it or like tossing it to me? So I just start and then you toss it? Uh, I feel like I've seen this done before, but people like roll the ball. I think we're just scared of having me do any like pitcher fielding athletic drills, right? God, this guy might try to slide and like make some stupid play, and hurt himself again, can't have that. Were you nervous at all? No. Not nervous at all, huh? Yeah. You kind of have to say you weren't nervous, even if you were. You got three sets of five on box squat. I'm in the 335, 365 range on these for threes. I of lifted in two and a half or three weeks because of the lower body injury. So I'm gonna keep it at 225 today. Don't wanna get hurt in the weight room while you're trying to recover from an injury. So we got some uh, RDL to hip locks, which are kind of interesting with a water bag. And we got some sit-ups and punches and some rotational lunges. One of the keys to rehab programs is to slowly build back strength and mobility and confidence in the motion that you originally got hurt in. So the way I got hurt was I, my knee was bent. I was like hunched over and I tried to pop up and rotate at the same time. So going from a flexed knee position with my knee towards my chest and then extending and rotating towards my left. That might look like random stuff that we're doing, but uh, there's a plan behind it. One of the machines that I've been using in the recovery process is called an AccuScope. And there's not a ton of scientific evidence that it works on healing injuries. However, lots of empirical evidence, healing soft tissue, helping reduce inflammation, also uh, healing bone. Um, and the way it works is it's a couple of electrodes that are kind of placed on a part of your body. It sends microcurrent between the two electrodes. And so you try to get the microcurrent to go through the place that's injured and promotes cellular activity. And then that promotes healing. You really can't feel it a whole lot when you're using it. So it doesn't feel like you're doing anything, but uh, we used it a lot on my hip flexor and that healed very quickly, a lot more quickly than the original MRI thought. I'm a believer in it, at least from this experience. Um, I'd have to get some more information on it, but uh, it's kind of an interesting old looking machine, but it's seems to have been helping. Oh! Uh,